week in the life of a commercial gas engineer. Here's a temporary boiler that has been set up outside. The pipe work is DN50, diameter nominal 50. You've got the gas supply, the flow and return, and it's, it's tapping inside the plumbing. You've got some scaffolding here, temporary scaffolding for the flue. You have the X pot here, the dosing pot and filter. You've got the hydrovar and the pumps underneath. Got plate to plate here, some hydraulic separation. Got 150 kilowatt boilers, which is the BMS system inside. This is the new pressurization unit and the other pressurization unit, one on one side, one on the other side of the plate. Pump running, and then you've got a hot water pump and a heating pump. Safety mat, safety knockoff, and then here's the gas supply coming in to the gas meter. And they've tapped in up there. This is all temporary. Let's move on to another plant room. Now, this is another plant room with a temporary boiler on site. So you can see the flow and return there and the gas valve here. And it's pressure nominal 16, diameter nominal 50. So this temporary boiler is here for the time being. And here's the electrical supply. And it makes its way up in through this wall. All right, and this is it making its way into the plant room. Okay, and then we have it tapping in over there. One of the connections and then the other connection from the temporary boiler is tapping in over here. And there's the gas pipe. Gas pipe's making its way in. Back around there, sort of like a snake, isn't it? All right, so here's the new pressurization unit and here's their pumps. That can repressurize the system. The expansion vessel there and some new Loara pumps and another twin set. Got the old pumps still running. And then you got a plate to plate here with some hydraulic separation and Evo Maxes. These are room sealed Evo Maxes. There's only two over here, so they're in line with the Clean Air Act. An expansion vessel here. This one is 35 litres. Then there's another one over there for the other side of the plate. Okay, let's move on to another plant room. Okay, so in this plant room here, I was here to check a pressurization unit. But whilst doing so, I noticed that one of the boilers came up with this fault. Checked the basics. When it, This says check gas to boiler, check condensate pipe refer to instructions reset boiler so i opened up the case and had a look inside and i didn't see anything untoward straight away then i looked at the condensate trap which had a kink in it there's the kink it looked as though there was no water inside and so i believe that that's probably due to the, the boiler being off for such a long time that it's dried up but the ball was stuck so i gave it a clean out then replenished the water and made sure that the ball was moving then I reset the boiler and gave it a test. Turn up the set point. Well, check the set point was up. Turn the other boilers down to make sure that this would come on, but still had a problem. So I checked the other condensates. Then the condensate was still a bit bunged up. This is what the sort of residue I was finding in there. Had to look up the flue, making sure there was no blockages, but still the boiler was going to lock out. So I cleaned up the probes at the same time as well. And whilst cleaning up the probes, the detection and the ignition, it gave me an opportunity to have a look inside. The probes needed a, a clean up. I got my, my spark tester. You can get these for about five, six pounds. They're normally used on cars, but you can use them on boilers. So I put them on here, my little spark plug tester to make sure that it was sparking inside the boiler and it did light up so the spark tester showed that there was a spark but still seemed like there's a problem so i thought i'm going to check the gas got on to checking the gas and there was what do we have 
we had a standing pressure of 29 millibar. So that didn't appear to be the problem. So I shut off the gas supply and did a test to see if the gas valve was opening. So as you know, I isolate the gas supply, get the boiler to go through its firing sequence and then see how much the gas drops. And it drops to about, just it, it barely dropped one millibar when the boiler was meant to initiate the gas valve to open. So the PCB is meant to send a signal to the gas valve to open and then it only dropped from, here we go, from 29.69 0.06. So I thought that isn't that much. So then I said, let me test the boiler next to it that's working. So I got my gauge onto the boiler next to it. Then it was a standing pressure of 30.55 millibar. And then as it was about to light up with the gas valve isolated, it dropped to minus 1.46. So the it completely let the gas through, the gas valve opened. So then to me, it looked as though the gas valve was the problem. So I checked V1 and V2. You can see on here on the right, you've got V1 and V2 and the earth in the middle. So I checked the resistance on those. It was very difficult to. In the same plant room, I had a problem with a pressurization unit. I was told to investigate. So I isolated the appliance, turned off the power, removed the fuse. And I looked inside and I did notice that there were three quick blow fuses that had popped. The one that was in situ and then there were two standing by that had blown as well. So I went and got my quick blow fuses. I didn't want to pop any more. So what I did is I found the connections that were going to the pump over here. There's the three quick blow fuses that had blown. They're so tiny sometimes. It's so hard to see the, the, the values on the fuses. So here's a little setup of it. You can see what, they, what it all does on the pressurization unit. So my first assumption before even doing anything is that it's going to be the pump. That's the problem. But we need evidence. We can't just say it's the pump on the pressurization unit. It could be the PCB, but it's mo most likely the pump. So here's the pump down here. I didn't check to see if the pump had seized. I didn't physically force, force it to see. I should have checked to see if it had seized, but instead I went for more electrical evidence rather than seeing if, it, if I could free it up. This is the model of the pump. It's a PQM81BS, the standard Flamco pump. And so I'm testing my multimeter to make sure that it is working that the leads are in because I have had incidences in the past where not testing them properly the leads not being in and then I think there's no power just be careful with that make sure you always test your test equipment so here's the connection here for the here's the connection here for the pump the live over here and the neutral over here I was trying to do a little resistance check on it to see what I got and I got 6.1 ohms I don't know if that's any good but that's the resistance i got but onto a more concrete test that i'm more sure of so here it is so i'm just doing my check so i disconnected the connections on the on the pump so here we are and then i turned the power back on and the pressurization unit did not blow any fuses so straight away I believe that my pump is what was blowing the fuses I wasn't there physically beforehand but when I when I came I just saw the fuses had popped so somebody is here was here before me popping fuses so I've got power to the unit It told me that the pressure was low in the system I didn't check any of the gauges beforehand but then what I did is I used the quick fill to top the system up then I moved on to just checking to see if the capacitor was of any use, if it, if it had blown. Got my pliers nearby. I managed to take the capacitor out of its connections. I checked the microfarads, which were 14 microfarads, give or take 5%. I got my multimeter where it needed to be. Looked for my symbol for microfarads. It decharged it first with my long nose pliers and then I checked and I had 13.91 microfarad so well within what it needed to be so there was nothing wrong with the capacitor. Uh, this is me decharging it 
beforehand. And this was me using the quick fill, as stated earlier, to repressurize the system. Pressurize it to one bar because I found it pretty low. There's the one bar of pressure. Okay, on to another site where there was a problem with them not having hot water and heating. So it was a strange one. You could see the temperature differences there. I had two pumps. One looked like the impeller was spinning, the impeller on the left. And then I checked the temperature going through the plate to plate. It was going in quite warm, but it wasn't coming out warm enough. So I was using my hand and also my laser thermometer to give me some indication of the where I was losing the heat in the circulation. So this is the system after realizing that the pump on the left was no longer operational. I did have to go around a lot. The boilers were operating, but I did have to trace around a lot. It wasn't a quick fix. It did take me a good hour or so to get to the bottom of the problem. The fan, you could see the fan spinning. And it looked as though the impeller was spinning, but it actually wasn't circulating. I don't know what was happening. I don't know if it was due to the the non-return valve getting like staying closed on the pump, or if it was due to it not actually being attached. I think that maybe with the the, the rotor probably connected, probably snapped. I had to turn off the pump, the faulty pump, and then the then the other pump kicked in. Pump number two kicked in. So it wasn't, it, despite me turning it over on the control panel, it wasn't kicking in until I actually shut off pump number one. Then pump two kicked in automatically. You can see me tracing the pipework, a lot of the heating flow and return pipework. Just trying to get an indication of where the heat loss was. Yeah, do bear in mind that you can just use your hands if you can reach the pipework. So what I'm showing you here is what I did before realizing what the problem was. So I was looking at the diagrams of the where the pipework was running. And what I did beforehand is I in, in, just to make sure that it wasn't an individual who was just calling for not having heating or hot water, I knocked on a few residents' doors and asked them, do you have heating and hot water? And once I got confirmation from two or three of them that they didn't have heating or hot water, especially in different parts of the building, not the same areas, because it could just be an isolated part of the building where there's some pipe work block, like if it's number one and number two, for instance, flat number one and flat number two. But you could see that there on the temperature settings on the boiler that there were problems. So these are the VT pumps here, the secondaries. These secondary pumps were operating well. I could see a difference between the gauges. But nonetheless, I do think that the gauges might be, they might be knackered. Because when I was turning the power off to them and on, there wasn't that much movement between the gauges. And you can see the temperature rise now, whereas when I first arrived, the temperatures were quite low. I believe they were about 30 Celsius or so when I first arrived. So I was just here witnessing the temperature rise after fixing the problem. And tracing the, the tags back to the drawings, to the schematics. And just slowly tracing pipe work through the plant room. Uh, and as well, whilst the system was heating up, I don't know if you do this, but whilst I was waiting for the temperature rise and making sure that everything was fine, you can just spend a quick 10, 15 minutes looking at the safety devices, check your flu, your air, your gas, your safety devices, check the ventilation whilst you're in there, the gas supply. Just have a quick look. You don't necessarily need to get pen and paper out and start doing calculations, but look at your gas pipe and so on look if it's clipped you can just make a note if you have to or when you go there for it you'll, you'll be one step ahead on your next service by just tracing and seeing and becoming familiar with that plant room i don't like going to to sites and walking away leaving an ideal at-risk situation so i like to have a little look 
at what is in there whilst whilst I'm waiting for the heat to rise in the system. On this particular site, there was a plate to plate leaking a lot. System was cold and was advised not to to really give the plate to plate a chance. But there are certain certain circumstances where you can measure the distance. You can get a tape measure out and measure the distance on these connections and just tighten them up so that there's a good equilibrium on them and also get some heat in the system because this system was cold it didn't help but once some heat was got into the boilers on the primaries and then the valves were opened up the heat and tightening up of the connections the plate stopped leaking it's quite surprising what can happen to a system when it gets cold thank you for joining me please leave comments in the section below until next time bye bye bye